Okay, welcome back, Amanda. So, as promised, I've got yarns in front of me, and I've got three different kinds of yarns. So, I'm going to show you how to read them and go over a few doodaddies that I have picked up that really make life easier when you're crocheting or you're knitting. So, here is a just a cheap bundle of yarn. Okay, I think this costs like six bucks maybe, um, and it's equivalent to three skeins. It's a 14 ounce, 396 grain uh, or gram um, skein. Okay, so this is equivalent to three, and it'll tell you how many yards are over here. Now, the most important thing: this is 100% acrylic. This is more what's used for hats, uh, for cheap hats like for kids, um, for scarves. You know. For, for quick and easy everyday projects. This is primarily what is used for blankets as well. Okay, so if you go to the side, it's going to tell you, let me come in a little bit closer here, it's going to tell you it's a medium weight yarn and in a 4x4 four four, um, patch or, you know, sample, you're going to have 12 single crochets on and you're going to use a number nine or an I um, crochet hook okay on a knitting needle you're going to have 17 stitches for a four inch square okay on a US 8 needle now this is a US 8 needle and I'll, I'll show you that here in a minute and it'll give you laundry instructions okay and it'll also show you how to pull the yarn there's two different ways you can pull a skein of yarn and so it's really important to pay attention to this now sometimes I work two skeins at once and I always pull from the same direction so let's say I have two of these big things of uh, yarn and I'm going to be doing a you know two strand crochet which I do often I'll have two skeins of this going at the same time but I have those two skeins separate and I'm pulling from the same direction on the skein so either I pull from the middle which you'll see over here you'll find the middle string or I'll pull from the outside Okay, so that's really important and you can see this is a hundred percent acrylic and this one is the pretty much easy wash and wear kind of stuff it's worsted and it tends to be a little bit not as soft unlike this skein this skein is got um, merino wool and alpaca in it as well as some polyester so this is a natural fiber um, yarn. It's extremely soft. This is for the higher end projects that I do. Like your scarf was made with this type of yarn. You know, the one that has the little basket weaves, it was made with this type of yarn. This is more expensive, but for, a, you know, for learning purposes, you should use the cheaper yarn for right now until you get the feel of it. Now, there is also cotton yarn okay this is a cotton yarn and it you can find this at Walmart all of this except for the except for the blue one you can find at Walmart this one you really the nat, more natural fiber stuff you'll go to like Joann's or Michael's for maybe Hobby Lobby but I don't know I tend to go to Joann's I get coupons to go there and you can get them too they're right online so cotton yarn I really like this is a crochet pattern it's called the waffle stitch and if you look at it from the side you can see it's like waffled and this is a super super easy and this is what dish towel uh, you can make pot holders and um, dishcloths out of and you can also use um, for baby stuff because it washes up it's a hundred percent cotton really easy and then this pattern it's variegated this this right here looks like a mess but when you crochet it up 
it's variegated and it has all these colors already in it. Now, when you do a waffle stitch, it goes from being really thin. This is the chain side, and you can see it's kind of thin. And when you waffle it, it really thickens up. Don't forget to add syrup and butter. <laughs> Uh, that was Richard in the background saying add syrup and butter now so there's your three kinds of yarns really easy to start with this one is a project blanket that I'm working on right now and I'm using this it's for up to camp and I'll show you what that looks like um, in a few seconds but the the just plain old red heart worsted 100% acrylic yarn that is the one that you want to really start with to learn on now like I said this was this one takes a number eight knitting needle okay so this right here is a number eight knitting needle so the trick is you can go a size larger to knit with but it's really hard to go down to stitch with because it gets it can make the yarn too tight and it will tangle and it won't look good now, likewise, we needed a number nine crochet hook. So here is a number nine crochet hook. So if you decide to do um, a, um, a um, crochet pattern, you want to get the right kind of crochet hook. Again, you can go up a size, but it's really not advisable to go down a size. Um, that right here will tell you how many stitches for a single crochet it is in a four by four square in the same way for a four by four um knitting square so this is 17 and 12. how i do it is we've all seen these in sewing kits you can pick up a sewing kit for about five bucks and we all know what a gauge marker is you know for like a hemline well i use mine to measure out squares and as you can see there's the four inch square and that this blue thing right here slides and you can set it to the four and you if you cast on and do your stitches on the right gauge of needle and the right size of hook it should be in a four by four it'll be you know 17 stitches for a row okay now these funny looking little things right here they're actually stitch markers they look like little plastic um, uh, safety pins but they're not they're used for stitch markers like whenever I change a pattern or if I'm counting a lot of row, you know stitches in a row, I'll count so many stitches and put a stitch marker so I know I've already counted that. So if I'm counting, like the blanket I'm doing right now has close to 200 or 210 stitches per row. So whenever I was first setting it up, I would count out my stitches and put a marker every 20 stitches so that way if I lost count I knew I could go just 20 40 60 such forth okay these are you know they're like five bucks or, or less to get a package of them and they come in two or three different styles but I like this style the best now if you noticed I had these little green things on the end of my uh, knitting needles this is the best thing that I could have ever bought myself. Now, they come in a package of four. Here's the little package. And as you can see, it is a stitch holder. So it just slides on the end of your knitting needle. So if you want to stop, you know, because somebody needs something and, you know, you have to stop what you're doing, you can put this on the end of your knitting needle just like this and it just slides on there and it keeps your stitches from coming off I cannot tell you how many times I have sat over here and cussed and Richard says what's the matter I said my my stitches have slipped off my needle and then I have to go and try to pick up those stitches or in some cases it's a complete lost clause and I am having to 
rip it out, rip out my project, and redo everything. It is a bitch, and I'm a, it's, I, yeah, I'm in a bad mood for a long time. A good, good set of scissors that is strictly for your yarns is a must. Get yourself a good set of scissors that only will stay in your knitting bag. That's the only thing you use it for. That helps for a good clean cut. Now, the other thing, this is something that I really like if I'm working with multiple strains. It's a little silicone ring that has these, this little plate right here changes out to different gauges. Right now it's set to su super bulky, so you can see it, but you put it on your finger and it's a yarn guide that, you know, you feed your yarns through. It helps it keep it, uh, keep from getting it tangled up. Is it a necessity? No. It's just a little doodaddy that cost me two bucks and I had, I, I use it whenever I'm doing a multi-strain. Like whenever I made the kids hats and their scarves, I used this to keep those strains separate and they didn't get all tangled up and one was longer than the other or something like that. It helped keep my tension going. Now, the other thing that you will need With a fork. is, <laughs> Richard being a, a doofus, is... Um, darning or yarn needles. Now, I got this little case that originally had two needles in it at Joann's years and years and years ago. And it's big enough, it will hold a lot of darning needles. Okay, yarn needles. I have 98 cent plastic one. I have all different sizes of darning needles with different kinds of points these are invaluable I like the metal ones to put my yarn through and to weave in my tails or to sew yarn projects together these are so important to have spend the money I think it's going to cost you probably five bucks to get the right kind of needing needles so the whole all your stuff to start with a set of knitting needles a set of crochets uh, or a, a crochet hook don't worry about the circular needles now a good pair of scissors yarn needles stitch markers a guide and a ball of yarn to practice with you're talking at the most 25 bucks if you go to joannefabrics.com, uh, you can get um, look at their coupons and get like a 50% off coupon on one item. Excuse me, Richard's moving the truck to bark back into a dock. When I come back, I'll show you how to do a simple chain on a crochet hook. 